hello friends welcome to java ee ejp jpa tutorial in the past few videos we learned about the jms communication i mean java messaging service as well as message driven bin in the previous video we created a message driven bin with a dummy implementation of on message so in this video we will create the jsp file which will act as a text message producer so the jsp file will uh, put a message in the jms queue so once that is done we can go back to our uh, mdb message driven bin and write code for processing the message we will be writing code on the on message handler on the mdb here now we will move ahead with uh, creating the jsp file in the last video itself we created the form now we will do the uh, form field processing that means we will retrieve the form field data then we will create a text message and we will send that to the um, jms queue so a quick review on our previous uh, videos In our previous video, we created the JSP form and we just wrote the form HTML form in the JSP file. Now we will go with the second part of this JSP file implementation. Here we will read the content from the user supplied data, then we will form a text message. After that, uh, we will form a connection and a session information for our uh, JMS queue inside the while fly. Then we will put this uh, text message in the queue. So as usual, we create the initial context and we keep that in an object CTX. So previously we used the CTS dot ctx dot lookup that means a context dot lookup initial context dot lookup to get a proxy for the remote interface in the stateless bin here if you see we are passing the jnda name of our uh, jms queue so the queue we named it as a free shipment req right So this is the Q name and this is the JNDA name and here to the CTS.lookup we are giving the JNDA name. Next we create connection factory and if you see we are still using the CTX.lookup and here we specify the connection factory jndi and we are casting that to connection factory and the factory is ready here next we create connection using that factory so this will give you a connection object jms connection then we create a session and we store that session here So now we have JMS Q 
queue is ready. So this is the queue object from JMS. Then we have a connection session also ready. Here we have a connection session also ready. Now using the form field data. Here if you see this is the booking person name. When we go to the um, code implementation that time uh, we will show you more code that will get uh, the form field information. Since we have done that many times. Um, so the form field processing is not shown here but anyhow when we go to code or if you download the code from the video description you will see the code for that and we retrieved the booking person from here 3 then this is a carry weight and we appended these two information with a caret symbol and here we are storing that as a string data Next, we create a text message. Or before that, if you see, JMS session here, B is there, right? This is the connecting part from B, JMS session, we create a producer. So, producer, we are giving our queue here. So, Shipment queue is already ready. It knows where is the destination using this JNDI name and using that information we are producing the uh, I mean we are creating the message producer. So we name that here as a sender since this is running here on the JSP the JSP will act as a message producer. Next from this same JMS session from JMS session we created we created the message producer from the same JMS session we create the text message as well once the text message object is in hand we supply the data which we formed here so now message producer the sender is ready and what data the sender will send that is also ready so to create this message producer we use our shipment queue so we pass that shipment queue to this constructor and shipment queue knows where is the queue using this jnda name uh, it knows where is the queue on the wild flight so if you look at the full config uh, this is the JND name and the JND name you can see here as well. So in one of our video we created this uh, queue. So by supplying that we created the message producer. Then uh, we created the text message also. So two moving parts ready now. One is the uh, message producer which will send the object then the text message. The text message we constructed from this form field data processing next comes sender sender is the producer producer was created using this shipment queue sender dot send and text message text message is nothing but the booking person carrot with carry weight so after sending the message if you see here the control immediately returns to the next statement that means it won't wait on this particular line so it immediately comes to the next line and to the output stream we are sending a shipment request posted log in tomorrow to get your free shipment id just some informative message this may not be meaningful here but uh, you will get an idea so the user once they click the book shipment in the bottom they will be getting a uh, shipment request posted with a big bold letter then uh, the information text here in the next line that will also get posted so this will get posted immediately after clicking this uh, book shipment that means a browser is not waiting or hanging so getting the shipment id will take more time that we will see when we go to the on message processing there we will be contacting our stateless bin and accessing the um, 
simulated long running task method which is located in the stateless session b all right now we will go to the demo so here we are starting our workspace So this is our body tag, right? After this uh, form field processing. Here, if you see, this is the form field processing. First, we get our uh, uh, form field data using request.get parameter. This is the name we are giving booker name. So in the input you can see the control name is booker name. Using this we retrieve the uh, content entered by the user. The same goes for the next text field on the form and form field data is retrieved that was uh, kept here in the carry weight. Next, we check user actually submitted the form using the conditional conditional check. First, we are checking booking person is not equal to none and carry weight also should not be null. Those stuff we are checking. When the form runs for the first time, these two will be empty because the form is displayed for the first time to the user. So we will not be getting inside. But uh, once uh, user fills the content and when they click submit, the same JSP file will run once again. That time we will be having valid booking person name and carry weight. So we get inside this uh, uh, conditional class. All right. So when user is submitting valid data, we need to uh, go with the message producer uh, coding. So first we First, we create our free shipment queue. So this was already explained in the slide. Now we will concentrate on resolving the errors. There are two information we are using. One is the context, initial context, and another one is the queue. So we will go ahead here. We will go ahead and add those entries here. JMS queue. This uh, queue is from uh, javax.jms.q. Then javax.naming uh, uh, package, we are importing initial context as well as a context. Context, an initial context. Here we are creating new initial context, right? So all three uh, packages we imported here. And here we have uh, shipment queue ready. So here in this uh, code snippet, we are getting the connection. So to resolve all this error, we need to go with our second set of import. Connection factory, all are from JMS, connection factory, connection and session. Connection factory, connection and session. Now we will add code so booking person and if you see booking person is retrieved as part of the form field processing carry weight retrieved as part of form field processing once a string data is ready from JMS session we create the message producer and from the same JMS session object, we create the text message. So we have to add these two um, imports in our JSP header. So we will go to 
PHG import directive. Here in this page import directive, we will add a message producer as well as a text message. For organization purpose, I am keeping this here. Finally, here everything is ready. Message producer is ready. Text message is ready. Message producer is created from shipment queue and uh, shipment queue is key here and shipment queue we created using the uh, JNDI name which we used while creating the JMS queue in the world fly as a super user. Now we will send that or we will put this text message. So here we are making call to the method send on the sender message producer the message producer will transfer this data or wire this data to the wildfly container and wildfly will uh, retrieve that and keeps that in the message queue free shipment or eq now free shipment or eq is having the message and in the next video we will uh, go ahead and start implementing the on message We will check once for any error here. Okay, that's all. Now we will go ahead. We will stop the EJB ER. Then we will remove it. Then we will stop our server. So in the next video, we will implement our on message. So just now you watched the demo. So the JSP form, uh, just now you saw the demo. The JSP form acted as a uh, message producer. It uh, retrieved the form field data from the HTML form element, then formed the text message. It uh, created the JMS queue as well as the uh, session. From the session, we created the message producer and we equipped the queue with that message producer. And then we created the text message from the same JMS session. And then finally, we sent our text message to the uh, queue using the send method. In the next video, we will see how to consume the message which was placed in the JMS queue. Thank you for watching. Bye.